What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know and to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. Today, I'll be walking you through the first steps of the editing process, starting with stereo balance, multi-track mixdown, and normalization. Let's do this. Stereo balance refers to how we balance the audio for each track between the right and left channels. Once we have them properly balanced, we will then mix them down into a single stereo file, which retains that same separation established in the multi-track mix. Normalization refers to the amplification of the audio to the highest possible level that it can be without distorting. Before we begin, I'll give you a brief breakdown of what we'll be working with here. I have in front of me a marimba recording session of the Courant from Box Violin Partita No. 2, in which I used a pair of AKG 414s up front and another pair of DPAs further back as room mics. I recorded it in four chunks, each overlapping by two measures. After I nailed each chunk, I labeled it with a marker, moved the camera, and moved on to the next chunk, repeating that same process. At the end of the session, I also did three full runs while Sammy circled me with the gimbal to create a wider variety of footage to work with. Throughout this series, I'll also be showing you some tips and tricks that you can use to help you keep track of your video footage as well. If you'd like to see the finished product beforehand, click on the card up here. Once I've saved the session and I'm officially in the editing stage, the first thing I'll do is open up a blank Word document and copy the notes of the keepers for the chunks I recorded. This is going to help me later when I'm searching for those chunks. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about tracking the session, click on this card. Okay, so we're officially ready to start editing our audio. First, I'm going to double check for any timing difference between the mics. Remember that one set of mics was further back than the other, so there should be a slight delay between the AKGs up front and the DPAs in back. To do this, I'll come to the very start of the session, zoom all the way in on the slate, and just as we thought, the AKGs are in fact slightly ahead of the DPAs. All I need to do here is highlight two of the tracks and drag them until they align perfectly with the other two. This is one reason that I like to record the session with zero stops, because if you're starting and stopping a lot, you'll have to do this several times, which gets really annoying. Next, I'm going to adjust the panning of the mics. To start out, I have a hard pan in which the mics are panned all the way to one side. In this case, the Omnis sound great when I pan them all the way, but for the AKGs up close, it is a bit much. So let's try changing this to 45 on both sides and see what it sounds like. Yeah, I think I like that more. It's a little bit fuller sounding and not so extreme when I'm moving from one side of the instrument to the other, so I think this is good to go. But before moving on, the reason I'm not messing with the balance between the volume of the mics is because I was really careful when I set my input levels in the first place. In the instance that I wasn't, I'd need to go in and balance the output of each mic to make sure the levels are just right. But even if I did, I'd end up mismatching signal to noise ratios, meaning I'll have more room noise in one ear than the other. Click on the card up here to learn more about setting your input levels. Once I've finalized the mix, I'm going to save the raw session one more time because we have made changes to it. The next thing we need to do is mix down this multi-track session into a single stereo file. To do this in Adobe Audition, we'll come up to File, Export, Multi-Track Mix Down, Entire Session. As you can see, I have the raw session saved to a raw session folder, so for the mixdown, I'll simply create another folder entitled Mixdown. As we progress, we'll be saving different versions of our audio each time that we make changes to it. This ensures that it's easy to go back and make changes if we end up not liking something or make any mistakes along the way. As far as the title of the mixdown, I like to save it as Title, Mixdown, and the exact amounts I used when panning. So, for example, Courant, Mixdown, DPA100, 
AKG45. When exporting, make sure that you're exporting it as a .wav file at the same sample rate and bit rate that you record it at. Find your raw mix down folder and save it to that folder. This may take a while depending on how long the session is, so while you wait, just get up, make some coffee, answer some emails, and it should be done by the time you get back. Once it's done, you'll see the mix down show up in your files panel, and you can see and hear the single stereo file resulting from the mix down of those four mics. This is so much easier to work with, and as you can see, it even retained all of the markers we created in the multi-track session it was mixed down from. The next thing I like to do after the mix down is called normalization, which is essentially amplifying the audio as much as we can without distorting. Normalization is based on the peak of your audio volume. So if the loudest part of my track is already at 80%, normalizing the track to 95% simply raises the overall volume of the track by 15%. Before we normalize it, we need to make sure to reduce the levels of unwanted sounds, such as the slate, and bring the level of it below the rest of our audio. If I normalize this as it is, it'll actually bring the overall levels down, because the slate I gave was already peaking. So I'll need to bring the level of that slate down below the level of the marimba audio, and then I'm ready to normalize. To do this, come up to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, Normalize Process. Let's check the boxes for normalize 2 and percent 85. I typically don't go any higher than 85% for marimba recording specifically because anything higher than that gets a little bit raunchy for my taste. Hit OK and you'll see that the audio levels increased. Now if it decreased for some reason then there's probably a spot that you missed in there somewhere. So go back and double check to make sure that your audio isn't distorting somewhere. Now that I've made more changes to this audio, I'm again going to export the file, create a new folder entitled norm, which is of course short for normalization. I'll keep the same file name as my original mix down, but this time adding norm85 on the end of it, which clearly tells me what I did here, and save it. All right, so we've successfully increased the volume of the audio, but the problem is that this also increases the background noise, or room noise. So be sure to check out the next video where I show you how to reduce background noise and any other unwanted sounds that you'll encounter in your recording. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're learning something from this series, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, happy recording.